Discussing earlier that IDEO is the one who popularized design thinking, please enjoy this short documentary by Open Culture as to who or what IDEO is and how they use design as a problem-solving methodology. That is the most complicated question. What is IDEO? Uh... IDEO. 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 IDEO looks like a very serious design company. Behind the scenes, it's kind of like Oompa Loompa, Willy Wonka, <laughs> Playland. There is this amazing power of wide-eyed curiosity. What is it that the world needs or that person needs? It's hard to imagine a facet of life where we're not being asked some kind of interesting question. How might government be more responsive to its citizens? What is teaching and learning in the 21st century? How do we think about accessibility? Make healthcare more seamless. Design the future of self-driving experiences. Change the demographic for voting in a county that has five million voters speaking 30 different languages. Provide access to justice to all the people who can't afford lawyers. Create products that actually add value to people's lives rather than becoming another distraction. IDEO is uniquely equipped to come into those kinds of big, messy, complex problems. I think we're teeter-tottering on the edge of really getting into some great David, interview, take two. There's a lot of Davids in this company, just so you know. After I met Bill, we decided to merge our firms and make IDEO. That was a long time ago. So before we merged, the designers would come up with some beautiful stuff, and the engineers would want to compromise all the interesting bits away to make it more manufacturable. Turns out it was actually a big idea for us to come up with something that was well-designed and well-engineered, and then present that to the client, see their eyes sparkle. That's when we knew we really had something of consequence. At IDEO, there was a different approach. It was designers and engineers working together. We would go in to see the CEO, and he or she would say, you know, you say you want to design our new chair, let's say. Tell us about other chairs you've designed, right? And um, I didn't have the heart to tell them that not only hadn't we designed any chairs, we hadn't designed anything. but. We have this process that'll probably result in a different kind of chair than if you hired a chair designer to do it. That was the pitch. I had a background in psychology. Gosh, it seems like we know or should be learning quite a lot about people. Couldn't we therefore be designing better stuff? if we incorporated some of that knowledge into some of the decisions that we were making. Common sense would say, well, instead of just designing it by yourself in a room with a bunch of other engineers, maybe you should go out and talk to people that you're designing for. You know, from business school and every quarter of any institution I'd ever worked for, there's a real premium on knowing. And people would actually carry around books of what they know. And at IDEO, it was just okay to say, I don't know, let's find out. It's our job to always question everything and always ask why. Why is that? Why do you do that? We go out into the world, we talk to people, we sit in their homes, we have conversations with people, we ask for their ideas. We would come back from the field informed and inspired by some of the things we'd seen. And use our tools and education and expertise and intuition to create a solution for you. Because people would say, oh, I'm stupid. I can't figure out how to use this thing. We said, no, 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 no. It's poorly designed. We'll make it so that it's intuitive. And then you don't have to have this disconnect between the human and the technology part. Designing a reading machine for blind people or computers that were going to figure out whether this was a tissue match between between two people getting a heart transplant. I mean, that's the kind of stuff we're working on. Design a mouse or design a laptop. What's that? I mean, we get to determine what this thing is from scratch. There's an inquisitive approach that doesn't say, what do I as a creative person want to put out into the world? What does the world need? What's the world asking of us? And then how can we use design to help bring that to life? The culture of how you go about innovation and design is as important as the process. Design, for me, has never been an individual sport. It's always been a team sport. How could I possibly have all the good ideas? What we found is that when we brought these people in from different disciplines, they just had ideas that resonated. People coming together with different areas of expertise. Fluidly working together and provoking each other to do a little bit better. Constantly entertaining ourselves by adding new disciplines to the mix and activating them as designers. Musicians jam together. 
You walk into a project space, it's, you know, the same kind of energy. The Nightline shopping cart video in 1999 still amazes me. The number of people that come up to me and say, oh, I saw it in my class. You saw it in your business school class in 1999? No, no, last week. Take something old and familiar, like, say, the shopping cart, and completely redesign it for us in just five days. Humble object, really, a shopping cart that everybody could relate to. It was long enough to show how we actually behave together and how individuals contributed and how the group worked. Oh, you know, that's what happens. Everything gets designed and there are people who do that and that looks exciting. It seemed to be an example of how you could be more effective as innovators. So I think that was actually the most important thing. There was nothing in that show that said, you need design. People filled in that space. We got a call from the director of the emergency room at DePaul who said, if you can do that for the shopping cart, you can do that for my emergency room. And so we did. This was a surprise to us in terms of how far it could go, and it really unlocked the diversification that we saw with the rise of design. Once we'd stepped over that line and we were comfortable with that, we just kept going. All of a sudden, businesses that have been happy, kind of trundling along for decades, found themselves having to innovate. So there was this recognition that the world of business really wasn't equipped to grow in this way, and that the smart organizations would cultivate that and invest in it. Help me get better at creating more options for my customers so that I can grow the top line of my company. Design thinking gave us a way of explaining what design was to people who didn't understand it. It's actually not anything IDEO invented. The only thing that we did was try to make it a bit more explicit. Here's how we understand the market and the people. Here's how we interview people to understand what they'd like. And here's how we prototype. It empowers people to get their ideas out and to share them. It's just a way to start. Being willing to have 100 sketches on the floor that didn't work before you find the one that does. We test those out, we see what works, and we refine those. From ambiguity to clarity to refinement to either launch or implementation. It holds the space for us to be sort of ambiguous and messy, knowing that you're moving in a certain direction that's going to lead to the outcomes you're looking for. Creating the conditions for innovation to happen over and over again. By having a methodology that we could teach, that we could share, where we could have clients come and work with us in the project room instead of just waiting for us to turn up with the deliverables. It made it possible for them to begin to soak up that capability. It doesn't just sit within IDEO. This is something that we've actually brought to a lot of our client partners and then help them grow within their own organization. It's good for business to let creativity out of the cage and let it run down the corridors. All we've done over the years is figured out how to scale it, how to make it more accessible by embracing design thinking we were able to start to find ourselves in those types of conversations that were far more impactful for society. The world is at a difficult place right now. If you look at communication, politics, society, the environment, there's a fundamental or an inherent lack of creativity in trying to answer these questions. In a moment where there's so much disruption and upheaval, being able to sit in that space and guide others through the ambiguity is incredibly valuable. Not trying to know the answer at the start of the process is something that is very fundamental to design. We bring our creative lens, imagining how we can make that world better. I'm careful about words like solution or the answer because these are people-based systems. The important part about tackling big questions like that is trying to understand the context in which they sit. It's not just about going to someone's house and spending an hour anymore. The best way to do that is to start with co-design instead of going to those people to learn from them, actually bringing them in to the process. Not just clients and organizations we're designing for, but the people that it's going to affect in communities, governments, organizations and partners that can help us implement. The larger the scale gets, the easier it is to forget about the people in the system. The people in that community are shaping the decisions that they're making. So we had to shift away from being the ones to decide to being the ones who facilitated others to get to that decision so that their voice is the design solution. That's the only way you can go after these big, complex problems. We have helped elevate design up to being one of the ways in which humanity improves itself and improves its condition.
We've had a series of these clients over the years that have helped expand our minds. Carlos Rodriguez Pastor, who's the CEO of Intercorp, he came and said, I want to redesign schools in Peru, and I think you can help. We would have loved to have thought that we could design a new school system, but I'm not sure we would have ever gone to somebody and say, hey, please let us. Idea is going to go where people ask us. The problems we're being asked to help solve are far beyond what we could have imagined four decades ago. If the whole world thinks all designers do is something decorative, they're not going to come to you and say, hey, we actually have a serious issue of sexual harassment on our university campus. Can design play a part in helping us solve that? And not through just putting up more compliance posters, but actually asking, how do people relate to each other? What is the culture? What should be changed? Design can help answer that. Today, we're thinking about design as an opportunity to reimagine the world, the objects, the institutions that help to reinforce the ways that people relate to each other. Redesigning entire systems that affect our societies. How do we design a system of re-entry for people who have been incarcerated? Make saving money more fun. Help make Judaism fit into people's lives. Help successful companies of the past be thriving companies of the future. Redesign our idea of classic beauty. Create a welcoming and secure environment for immigrants. To a certain extent, the first response has to be, where do we start? If it was that easy, somebody else would have done it. Literally, the hairs will stand up on the back of my neck when I know we're at the edge of everybody's ability. You're on a lake, and the fog drops down, and you are rowing, and the client is freaking out because you know you're going to hit land, but the client thinks, oh my god, they're rowing us into the middle of oblivion. We're in the business of sort of navigating the fog and helping clients not jump out of the boat. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed and learned from IDO themselves. For now, let us move on to the next module and see the difference in application of design thinking versus design sprint. So, let's go.